Hey, this is Marks Washington, MTC Media, with takeaways from Notre Dame's uh, win last night, 23-13 over Texas A&M. Uh, first of all, uh, it starts with the offensive line. I talked about this in our preview, uh, in case you missed it, or uh, in the future, in the future there will be Notre Dame preview, so be sure you go and read it. And it starts with the offensive line, which at the beginning of the game showed um, – showed how young it was, how inexperienced it was. And as the game went on, if you look at Notre Dame's rushing numbers, their rushing numbers got better and better and better, even though there's still things Texas A&M were doing to um, confuse them, if, you know, whether it was getting pressure, whether it was uh, really getting into the, the rush lanes on where Notre Dame wanted to go in the, um, in the running game. But what I will say is the, the play calling was interesting because at the beginning – um, you saw not on third downs, but on second downs, how many times Notre Dame would go empty. And you're thinking to yourself, like, wow, you know, uh, the offensive line and the running game over the last few years has been so good to see them going empty so much um, with the inexperience that they had across the, um, the front line. You kind of had scratching head uh, early on, but you started to understand as the game went on and how uh, Texas A&M was supposed to have the guys would have the ability to wear you down up front. And how I felt like Notre Dame's uh, offensive line, as it started, you know, developing some cohesion, started opening up those little cracks and little creases that allowed the running backs to get through. But the running backs also did better at seeing where those holes and where those opportunities were. As the game was going on now, you did have the penalties, you had the holding penalties, stuff like that, the penalties we'll talk about a little bit later. But for the most part, by the end of the game, the offensive line had established uh, a little bit of dominance on the road. And that certainly um, is credit to the coaching staff. It's credit to the kids, too. But it's, it's a credit to the coaching staff to keep going. thought the play calling was um, pretty good as, as the game went on. They were finding out where Texas a and was bringing people, what they were kind of doing um, – in, in that back four and in the back seven with the backers and the D and the DBs and they found where their little places were, where their little niches were. So good job at adjusting. The defense, one of the things I also talked about in the preview was the defense had to live up to the hype. All the preseason wars that some of these players were getting. And the defense led up to the hype. Um I thought the front four did well in spots. When you think about it, Texas A&M's uh, running game, there were spots where they were effective. But for the most part, you go back and look at their numbers, the running game was not as uh, robust as it seemed with certain plays. Uh, Notre Dame did a great job with that front four and the front seven. I thought that Al Golden, I just did not expect <laughs> so many blitz packages, that, especially on, on second down and um second and third down, but especially on second down, how um, after that first drive or during that first drive, it's like Notre Dame started unleashing these blitz packages that certainly got um, got the quarterback off of his spot, had him rushing. Those things led to the two interceptions uh, in the first half. And that sort of creativity with a defense that was supposed to be good anyway, um, with defense that can be really, really good. Not, not like the um, the Teo defense. Not, not that year. But certainly in the secondary, can be really good. Uh, the linebackers, if they keep developing, could be very good. And and so, Al Golden and the defense and the blitz packages was one of the things that absolutely positively impressed me, especially down at the end. So you think that Notre Dame is going to go soft on defense. You know, you have the seven-point lead, you know, kind of go prevent-ish. Oh, no, no, no. They kept sending guys, and it almost led to a pick six by Christian uh, Christian Gray on that fourth down. But certainly um, the Irish defense lived up, at least in week one, they lived up um, to the hype. Now the bad thing. The penalties, uh, 11 penalties for almost 100 yards for the Irish last night. And it came in all flavors. It started with the offsides early on, on the hard claps um, that a and were doing. And then it was a myriad of things. There was holding. You had the, um, the DPI. Um, 
you had Howard Cross the Third's um, hands to the face, and and it was more than just the penalties. It was early on where the defense had worked hard in the first two downs, and had Texas A&M where you wanted them. You had them in third and five and more, and then next thing you know, uh, offside. So now it's third and two. It's third and one. It's extending drives. It's adding yards on top of a play. And it's certainly easy to start screaming the whole discipline thing. Oh, you know, the kids have undisciplined football. And I don't even think it was even that. I think part of it was first game jitters. Uh, part of it was Cal Field is a, can be a difficult to put, place to play, especially um, at night. And I think part of it was excitement. If you watch college football throughout the day, man, how many targeting penalties did you see? It was a boatload. I mean, starting with Thursday night with the football all the way through yesterday, all the way through Saturday, it, it was just a boatload. I just think that guys were so raring and ready to go in an era that starts the 12-team playoff where there's this excitement that you don't have to be perfect or darn near perfect to make the playoffs. Guys are just playing, but you kind of have to harness that. I don't think that Notre Dame... I don't think the penalty um, problem that you saw on opening night is something that's going to be indicative of this team. But when you're on the road against um, a, a SEC team, you just cannot commit penalties like that. You cannot help teams out. And Notre Dame's penalties uh, help them out. So again, the Irish with a, a big win last night on the road. Signature win for them on a schedule. That I think it's kind of being um, underappreciated. I think some of those teams on the schedule um, that don't have numbers beside them for rankings um, will have some numbers throughout the year. You know, Georgia Tech will be also a tough one. They've already shown that. So um, it's not as much of a cruise as people think it is, but it's one of those things where Marcus Freeman has to just keep emphasizing week after week after week to get better. So... Those are my takeaways from Notre Dame's victory over Texas A&M. This is Marcus Washington, MTC Media.